Welcome to the new update video. I'm back from my holidays and now I'm sick. So you'll enjoy Wolfie's voiceover. The main task was to prepare the growing room for the baby plants, which are already starting to sprout. Building the growing lamp was a bigger task than expected and takes up the main part of the video. Enjoy! This is just a rough sketch of what it should look to have a better understanding what kind of wood I need and what distances uh, I want to have between the lamps. This is in particular important as those uh, lamps or light bulbs have a certain radius in which they work the best for the plants. So there I'm trying to lay out how I want those to be spaced. First I'm cutting the long parts of the lamp which go on the left and right of it. As those are rather long boards, I'm cutting them with a handsaw. The other ones I'll cut on the mitre saw as they're way smaller and better to handle. We haven't talked too much about the layout of our workshop, but one thing that I really like is most of the stuff we have is on rolls, so you can adjust the workshop rather fast and easy. As you will see throughout the video that I'm multiple times shifting a little bit the layout. After cutting the small pieces to length, I had to cut them to width as well. I could just run them to the planer as they are just long enough to have the minimum length of the planer to run to. I decided to go for the small table saw that we have as this is more convenient for me. As the side parts were also too thick, I cut them to width and this surface which has been freshly cut needs to be planed now as well. On the smaller pieces I will just sand them, but on the longer pieces I'll run them through our thicknesser. In the end I give them more than just one pass as one of the sides didn't look pretty nice in particular and I wanted to have a even numbered thickness which makes it easier later on to work with them. As you can see here we had some tear outs and a branch included in the wood. Though this side part shouldn't hold that big of a weight I wouldn't want to risk it so I drilled out the holes and patched them up. And of course this has nothing to do with the fact that we now have a drill that produces those very nice patches. After finishing with the gluing up and putting those on the heater so that the glue would bind faster, I once again rearranged the workshop to set up our bandsaw for some smaller cuts or notches for the small pieces so that they can fit now in the long side pieces.
After making the first cut with a band saw, the secondary cut to get the notch out I'd like to do with a table saw. It gives me somewhat of a clear, clear edge and the first cut I make with a band saw will be glued later on so you won't see that this edge is not too straight but it's faster to do and more secure in my opinion to do with a band saw. At this point I regret a little bit my decision to run the smaller pieces to the planer as well because getting off the saw blade marks was quite a pain. And sanding is always, as everyone who works in carpentry or does something there knows, a lot of work which you really should try to avoid as it's not the most enjoyable one. And for those of you who are not working too much or too often with wood, this is why most woodworkers don't like sanding so much, because you do a lot of it. After being finally finished with the sanding, I went and started the layout of the cross beams that I have towards the lengthy parts of the lamp. Those are mainly support beams, they won't be used to fix the lamps. Um, as you will see later on, I changed the design that I initially had with steel cables to have some wood panels there and fix the lamps on those or the light bulbs on those then. In the next step I cut two slots into the uh, lengthy part of the wood to later on create a groove in which I can lay then the cable. So this will be the upper part of the lamp which you won't see later on that hides the cable in this groove. As I'm not sure how and uh, in which way we will use those lamps later on, I'm cutting two grooves on each side to be able to carry a cable if needed. Here you can see me creating this groove that I mentioned. There are many ways to do this and we also have a, a multitude of machines with whom I could do this. But at this point I was a little bit sick of uh, machining everything so I wanted to do something with the hand. That's why you see me doing this in a somewhat convenient way. But the real point why I did it, I wanted to have some good kindling wood for our stove. Next I'm marking the counter notches in the long boards where, where the cross pieces then will sit. And once again also for this we have better machines than a hand saw but I was sick of the noise and machining so doing this by hand again.
The chiseling out of those notches is a rather satisfying moment when they chip away that easy. After doing so, I, there's just a little bit to clear up with a sharp chisel and then you can start fitting in the cross pieces. Especially when you are working with soft wood, having sharp chisels is very important, as you rather tend to squeeze that wood with a dull chisel. This is why we keep ours very sharp, or as sharp as possible, in the shop. And at last, I have to do second side. After this, this part of the lamp is ready for the glue up. And as always, I like to have help with the glue up, as it's easier when you're two people, especially handling larger pieces, although they're not particularly heavy, but they can be somewhat bulky to handle on your own. Another regrettable thing that I did is changing the design of how I want to hang the light bulbs later on from steel cable to this knotted in uh, wood boards um, because I felt rather sadistic this day. I went, didn't went for a full notch as you see on the other cross parts. I went for a half way notch or two thirds of the thickness of the wood notch which is particularly stupid to chisel out in when everything is glued up together. There is one thing that I like even less than sanding, and that is dealing with electrics. Not because it's the same thing all of the time again like sanding, but to the fact that I have even less knowledge in electricity than in carpentry. Most of the time I end up calling one of my brothers or my father to explain what I should do and shouldn't. And here you'll have a look at the final end result. At least at one of those. I have to do all of it once more. No worries, it won't be filmed or explained in that much detail. For a little bit more of context why we do this. These are growth enhancing lights, LED based. They are multispectral, so that all spectrums of light are covered. The idea behind this is that our young plants have a better start, sorry, to say a boost, before they come into the field and the greenhouse.
In one of our last videos you have seen us building this room and the tables. This is our indoor grow room and the tables will host the plants. As we will water them we try to make the table as waterproofed as possible. Off camera we already drilled some drainage holes into it but now we will have to take care about the seal around the corners. This is also important as the table is not super straight and we don't want water that is standing in some of the corners to trip through and then be on the floor. So this is basically just one more step to making those tables waterproofed. We still have to seal off the edges so that they are protected against regular spillage of water. But this will have to wait for another time. As this is all what we have time for now, I wish you all a nice day and I hope you enjoyed watching the video. There is a little extra at the very end.